have the special message from our beloved president of Heavenly Asia One Regional Group. Please stand up everyone and help me welcome President Demian Dunkley with a round of applause. Dear precious family members, what if you could travel back in time to when you were a child? What if you could go back and give yourself advice such as certain things to avoid or certain things to look out for? What if you could go back in time to guide your younger self to make better decisions towards a happier life? You might think that you would give yourself advice such as which stocks to buy. For example, you might think to tell yourself, when you hear of a person by the name of Elon Musk designing an electric car, use all of your money to buy stock in his company, Tesla. Don't you think that you would want to whisper such advice into the ear of your younger self? Or perhaps you would say, keep your eye open for a company named as a fruit. The company will rise and fall before it rises again to become one of the world's most successful companies. You should buy stock in a company called Apple and you will be wealthy beyond your wildest dreams. Don't you think you would give yourself this advice? But don't you know that even the founder of that company, Steve Jobs, who had everything, admitted that he had regrets as he was dying. He was the founder of Apple and owned a large percentage of its wealth. But not only did he create wealth, he led a revolution in his industry and created a world famous legacy. He had everything. So why did he go to his deathbed with regrets? It is because he had neglected the most important thing his family. In fact, the most common regret people have on their deathbed is the same. We all die wishing we had spent more quality time, more loving moments with those closest to us. Isn't that interesting? When we die, we are not concerned about what car we drive or how much money we have, but rather how many happy memories we can take with us and how many happy memories we have left behind with the ones we love. This phenomenon has occurred throughout history. It is at our deathbed that we finally reach out to God with a yearning heart and think of those who we love. Even though we spend our lives fighting battles, rarely would we waste our last breath cursing an enemy. Rather, we think of those we love. True love has been out of our reach through every generation. Everyone has been suffering in love, not being joyful in love, frankly. With all of these complications tied to their necks, they have remained stuck in the shadows of the spirit world, watching their descendants repeat the same mistakes. So why have we mismanaged love throughout human history. Why? We know. Because the original model of love was taken from us. The original value of love was lost at the very beginning of human history. And so we have lived throughout the centuries grasping for something that was eternally out of reach. But now we have our true parents who have opened our eyes and blessed us. However, how well do we truly value this? Are we truly saved or have we continually fallen short of the blessing we've been given? Considering all of this, think again about what advice you would give to your younger self. If you could go back in time. I think you would seek to guide your younger self to find true parents quickly.
to offer prayers and devotions such that you would be able to have a deeper, artistic connection with them. More important than investing your money in successful companies, you would tell yourself to unite with true parents and invest yourself wholeheartedly in the relationship of those around you whom you love. You would be desperate to make your younger self realize the importance of your family. You would guide yourself how to truly live for the sake of the world by first establishing a culture of love within your family, wouldn't you? You would tell your young self to understand the heart of true father and true mother, to digest their words into your bone marrow and apply their teachings to your daily life. All this would be possible if you went back in time now to meet your younger self. If you could do so, would you do it? If you could do so, how much would you pay? What would you give up? What would you give up to be able to go back in time and bless your younger self with this precious wisdom? Think about it. What would it be worth to you? Would you be prepared, you know, would you be prepared to fast for 20 days, 40 days? I would. But can we travel back in time? We cannot. It is the same for our ancestors. They cannot go back in time. They cannot live their lives again. Some of them may have been great people and some may have not been so great. Regardless, None of them were able to know true parents in their lifetime. None of them were able to participate in the blessing. None of them were able to witness the original model of love. Every one of our ancestors suffered in this regard because true love was stolen from humanity at the very beginning. We lost it until now. Even though we cannot literally travel back in time, we can go back to the beginning of time and reclaim what was stolen from us, such that history can start anew, such that our lives can start anew. That means we are able to make new memories. Now is the time that we can go back to unravel all that was stolen and remove the hand from God's heart. We can give new life to our ancestors who long to love one another under the grace of God's light. They long to love one another and proudly look upon us, their descendants, us. It is us who are able to make the necessary conditions, even though small in comparison to the sacrifice of our true parents, that allow our ancestors to be free from the shackles of human sorrow. We can allow them to be free from the chains of having broken God's heart. This is the opportunity that we are here to participate in. Isn't that huge? <laughs> Did you read The Mother of Peace? Did you see the incredible sacrifices that Daemonim made in her life? She participated with her mother in the process of liberating her nation. Did you read about how she survived the onslaught of the Korean War, seeing her husband go and raising her precious daughter amidst all type of suffering? Did you read about how she lived a life as a devoted daughter to her own mother, as a devoted daughter to God, and a devoted believer in Jesus Christ who was willing to offer her life in order to attend him at his second coming? Did you read about the stories that our true mother described in here? How they traveled from the north to the south, risking their lives in search of safety? Remember, they were not seeking refuge for their own sakes. They were simply trying to survive long enough to be able to witness with their own eyes the Lord at the second advent and attend him. Did you read 
the stories of Damonim's countless battles with Satan, who was trying to attack her and attack her daughter? Did you read of her endless dreams where heaven guided her and promised her the princess of heaven? Did you read about how she not only prayed incessantly, but also offered endless devotions and fasts while continually sacrificing herself for the sake of others? She did all this while raising and protecting God's only begotten daughter in an environment of absolute purity and beauty. Did you read about these stories? It has been said that there was no member in our movement who was more devoted, more faithful, or more sacrificial than our true mother's mother, Damonim. It was she that laid down the intense conditions more than anyone in human history to prepare for, give birth to, protect and raise God's only begotten daughter. It was this woman who deserved to live a life of peace. Don't you think so? This was a woman whom we should have known, whom we should have attended, loved, thanked, and honored in all her glory. We cannot even compare the value of this precious mother to Mother Mary. You know, think of how many millions around the world adore and love Mother Mary, but do not yet know the most profound, most beautiful mother of our own true mother, Damonim. Don't you feel that we should have honored her, protected her, loved her, and served her? And yet, she stood in the background, constantly serving, loving, and protecting our beloved true parents. Not only did she love our true parents, she deeply, deeply loved all of the children of true parents us. When Damonim saw that our spiritual states were, were befallen, she could not bear to think of how much we were making God suffer, how much we were making true parents suffer, and how much we were making each other suffer. Such a sight was unbearable for her knowing that happiness was within our grasp, knowing that liberation and freedom and blessing was within our grasp, but that we were ignoring it and throwing it away. She could see that our spirit worlds were dirty and our ancestors were suffering. This is what drove our precious Damonim to offer her life early for our sake. Did you know that True Father said that had we fulfilled our responsibility, we ourselves would have been able to liberate and bless our ancestors, for we would have laid the conditions necessary to do so. But we did not. Even with all the blessing, wisdom, education and love that true parents gave us, we could never completely unite and attend our true parents. Not completely or wholeheartedly, but our true mother's mother could do so. Damonim did so throughout her life, even before meeting true father, she was living that way of life, right? You can read about it. Because of her deep love, because of her deep love, she asked God and true parents for permission to die early. Can you believe that? She was supposed to live longer, but she asked permission to go to the spirit world early so that she could bargain on our behalf to liberate us and our ancestors, to pull them out of the mudflats of hell, to pull them out of the confused and lost corners of the spirit world. She went out to find them hidden in the dark shadows 
of hell and had to stretch out her arms to pull them out. Do you know that when she goes to reach them, there are hordes of other dark spirits trying to grab onto her and deceive her? Did you know that when she reaches down into the pits of hell to find our ancestors, there are other spirits that come along pretending to be our ancestors such that they might have a chance to be saved? Did you know that as Damon pulls out our ancestors from their misery, other spirits cling onto their legs trying to pull them back down or perhaps clamber over them desperate to be saved? This is the crazy kind of job that Damon M volunteered for. Amazing. Because of these conditions, every single life that is saved is an epic journey of heroicism. Each life that is saved is worthy of a Hollywood film script at the very least. Our beloved true father ascended to the spirit world at the age of 92. However, the lives of Hyojinim, Hungjinim, and Daemonim were all offered early, weren't they? Each in their own way, they gave their lives as a condition to advance true parents' work. Those lives could have been spared if we were truly fulfilling our responsibilities. Did you know this? But we were not. And they willingly offered their lives. It is because of their sacrifices and their total devotion and unity with our true parents that we, with such a small effort, are able to benefit from God's grace through the Chombo Great Works. Thank you, true parents. We are able to benefit from God's forgiveness and God wishes it to be so. For us to simply attend a Chombo workshop, for us to simply pray and offer our devotions and make our offerings. These are such small conditions compared to what God and true parents have been through. Given all of this, can we bear to allow any of our ancestors to remain in hell any longer? In this sense, we do have the power to go back in time and hit the reset button. We have the power to give all of our ancestors a new beginning. Centered on true parents, we are making new history. Do you know the first thought in my mind when my wife and I completed the 430 vertical liberations and blessing of our ancestors, the first thought in my mind was, I hope true mother opens up more generations such that we may be able to liberate even more of our precious ancestors. How can we possibly think to leave them in hell for even one more day? This is a, an incredible, incredible, incredible blessing and opportunity for us, honestly. Not only are we loving them and liberating them and blessing them, but they in turn are coming back to protect us. They are coming back to guide us and support our work. They are coming back to protect our children also. You know, when we think of our children and who they will marry, do we want do we want our children to marry someone who has liberated all of their ancestors? Or do we want them to marry someone who has ignored this Chombo providence and failed to bless even seven generations? This is a serious matter. This is a serious matter. But it is only serious if we avoid it, if we ignore it and put it off for another day. However, when we embrace it wholeheartedly, when we dive in and do everything, everything in our power to fulfill these small conditions, then it is no longer a serious matter. It is simply a miraculous blessing. It is like a sunrise 
coming over the snow-peaked mountains of history to warm our hearts so that we may wake up so that our entire lineage may wake up and stretch into the warm rays of God's true love. If we could go back in time to our younger self, we would guide our young self to true parents first. We would guide our young self to wholeheartedly love God and true parents and prepare to create a beautiful, harmonious, blessed central family. This is surely the most precious advice that we could give our younger selves, right? But we cannot live our life again. Our ancestors cannot live their lives again. They cannot alter their legacy on earth. They cannot go back and change the choices they made. They cannot choose the time that they were born in so that they might be born at a time of true parents. They cannot go back of their own accord and find the conditions necessary to receive the blessing. It's impossible. As it is, they are simply waiting, longing, praying that we might recognize them and make the efforts to reach our hand out to pull them out from their tethered places where they have been waiting for centuries, for millennia, alone, cold, and longing to feel the warmth of true love for the first time. We cannot go back in time, but we can give them all rebirth such that they may start their lives again and feel the blood of our heavenly parent running through their veins. That is the blessing. We have the capacity to offer them the true love of a blessed family. That is within our power, within our reach. That is within your power. This work is not simply a ritualistic work of a new religious group. Participating in this workshop is the most amazing phenomenon. We should not just think of it as a workshop. We should not just think of it as another event. We should place our mind in the center. We should place our mind in the center. We can look at life in its entirety and recognize how lucky we are to be able to be alive at this time and to do this at this time. So let us invest ourselves wholeheartedly. Please liberate and bless your ancestors up to 430 straight away, straight away, right now. Do not delay, do whatever it takes to lay down the the necessary conditions to complete this great work and then encourage others to do so. For this is the path that all humankind must go. And we are the lucky ones who have been called to go this way ahead of them. We are doubly blessed. Please let us put our minds in the center and recognize how lucky we are. How lucky we are. Please invest 1,000% so that you may receive this blessing with the utmost gratitude and joy. If you do this, then I can truly say thank you. Thank you for leading the way so that others may follow your example. Thank you. And God bless you. Now let's have a great experience.